later. Um, I think we started talking about um, ISO C++ uh, proposals and papers. So this is one of the papers that I recently um, bumped into. And shamelessly for me, it was only recently because it is out there for some time already. Um, the person who brought it to my attention is uh, Yechezkel Bernat, and it was following some code that I was uh, uh, sharing with Yechezkel, and it was, he, he said to me, uh, said back to me, oh, this is like deducing this. And I said, what? And he said, it's a cool proposal. You have to take a look at it, and which I um, write uh, immediately did, and it is a cool proposal. So uh, I want to talk about uh, what brought me to uh, read this proposal. I mean, what was the code that uh, in a way um, annoyed me? Um, I was writing something and, and I said, this is the way to do that. I mean, isn't uh, any nicer way? Um, and then uh, deducing this is a proposal that is on the table and is about to solve a problem. Now, while solving a specific problem that I will start with, uh, the fun thing and the interesting thing is it brings a lot more. And I will talk about the things that this proposal brings after solving the specific problem. So let's, let's start with a problem. Um, I think that you, all of you met this problem in a way. Uh, in many cases, we have to write a specific function um, which, um, I see now that there is a, a revision five. Someone put the revision five uh, on the yeah, chat. It was what I, on the last mailing list. <laughs> the revision five is probably quite new because what I read, uh, I, I think a month ago was revision four. What is the date of revision five? It was from the last month's mailing okay. list, 15, but uh, there's basically not my, many changes, just uh, adding some implementation detail and some wording. So it's, it's not that. Sure. Because it means that, uh, you know, it's on its way. It, it probably will, will come up in, in uh, C++ 23. So the problem exactly. starts with uh, having almost the same function twice. Um, suppose that you have two um, implementations for one for a const function and the same for the non-const version. And the uh, implementation is quite the same. So we do that quite a lot. We just copy paste, uh, amend the privileges or, or um, uh, I mean, uh, the modifiers. This one is const, this way returns const t, the other one returns t, um, and we have the two functions. So far, a bit annoying, but okay, we can live with it. Uh, the problem can, uh, get, can get worse uh, when you have the four versions. And in some cases, you do have the four versions of the L value um, uh, reference, R value reference, const L value, const R value, and then you have to copy paste or almost copy paste all four options. Now, in, in many cases, eventually the same, it is the same. The only difference is the type, the return type and uh, um, accessibility or the modifier. You, you say, okay, I, I, I'm a const method and I return a const t reference. And this is the only thing, okay? The other part, the implementation itself, in most cases, is the same. It can even become worse when the function itself actually has code. So you do not only copy paste the signature and a single line, you copy paste a few lines of code. So what can you do with that? Um, you know, eventually it's the same code. Um, you can call uh, helper function, but again, you will need all four to call the same helper function. And then the question is, um, how can you write such an helper function, which will in a way manage correctly the reference type? Okay, we'll take a look, we'll try to find something. So um, there might be uh, some uh, solutions for that that we will review in a moment. Uh, but let me start with that. Uh, this is not a theoretical problem. This is an actual problem. It happens in uh, std optional value. The, the method value in std optional is all four options, which needs the copy paste. Um, string, operator, um, brackets, or at 
as the two versions, and it appears also in user's code. So uh, I personally came into it when annoyingly implementing something like that. And again, I tend to uh, believe that many of you already saw things like that. Uh, well, is copy paste so bad or is this copy paste so bad? Well, usually uh, programmers are quite okay with copy paste. You know, copy paste is our friend, but not when the language itself forces us to use copy paste. Then we, can't, we, we are frustrated. Okay, so copy paste when it is our choice, this is okay, but when somebody forces us, no, we do not like that. So um, let's try first to find a solution without any new language feature. So without any new language feature, what we can do is first we can just, uh, you know, we need to do, we need to um, bring the four signatures, okay? Um, but um, we can, in a way, delegate from the uh, const, from the non-const versions to the const version and then do the const cast and bring back the actual reference type. Uh, we need to do that uh, with a great care because uh, there is one way which is okay and the other way which is undefined behavior. You cannot call the const version and uh, you need, the compiler needs to preserve the right constness. So if you do it correctly, like I think in this slide, I believe, then okay, you have four versions, you wrote the code only once uh, here in the const L value reference version, and you call it with the correct const cast and static cast to bring, to, to bring you to the right implementation and then uh, return the correct value. This is one approach, doable. Another approach is to create a forward to an helper function, which can work for all, all four versions. And the helper function can be a static method that is using forwarding reference because in a way forwarding reference solves this problem. So if it was not a member function, if it was a free function, the problem is solved for free, a free function with forwarding reference. So let, let's create a static function which can use a forwarding reference. In this case, a forwarding reference, let's call the type name me and then we'll take a me double ampersand, which is here not an R value, but rather a forwarding reference because it is on a template type, on a template parameter. And then we can call it with all four versions. And again, we need all four versions, but uh, each one of them will be uh, one liner. This is nice. Uh, but then again, the question is, why can't we do something like a free function with a forwarding reference for member functions? And this was the question of uh, this proposal that I'm going to review. Uh, I'm, I'm taking a look at the chat to see if there is something uh, interesting. Uh, yeah, some, uh, it is called, uh, in the past, uh, the, the person who uh, first, uh, right. the person who first uh, gave a name for this uh, forwarding reference was Scott Myers in uh, Modern Effective C++ and he called it universal reference, but then the spec itself gave it a name which is forwarding reference and this is the um, usual name used nowadays. So um, this is the solution and this was the solution that I was using. And then when I was sharing that with Yeheskel, he said, you know, this is in a way what uh, deducing this is trying to do, but for a member function. And then I said, what? And then I went to read the proposal. So um, there is another option, uh, which I like using macro. You can say, okay, let's create the all four versions with a macro, but then, you know, macros are black magic and, not everybody like it, uh, but it is an option, okay? You, you can do that. Again, you will need the helper function and then you can create the four forwarders with a macro. Okay, nice. Um, so it's, it's not so bad to do copy paste. We do copy paste occasionally, okay? But then it in a way um, makes it, it makes it us feel not so well with the language, we feel we can do better. So the question is, can we do better? 
And well, not today, not today, but with uh, PO847, which now has a region five sent by Inval in the chat, we could do better. And the way to solve it is uh, in the following manner. What uh, this proposal says is the same that you can create a free function which uses folding reference, why not make this also possible for a member function? How can you do that? Well, quite simply, let's make it a member function and let's say that the this parameter is the first parameter of the function in a way like a Pythonic style, like sending self as the first parameter, like other languages will allow to or ask to write the signature of a member function with this as an actual parameter. So the proposal is saying, you, you know, we will allow you to add this as an actual parameter. Now, this again, as, as a keyword, the compiler will understand that it means we have a member function, in this case, which takes zero parameters. The first parameter is the calling object. You want to get another parameter, no problem. If you want to get one parameter, then the function will get two parameters. The first one will be this, and the other one will be the parameter that you want to get. Now, in this case, we do get a parameter, and the parameter can be templated. And once it is templated, Let's call the template parameter me and the actual parameter me with a small m. So me here is not our value, it's a forwarding reference. Now, I, I, I do skip all the reference collapsing and what is our value reference and why this is forwarding reference. So if somebody says, hey, isn't it our value reference? There is some, you know, pre uh, conditions or, or things to, to read or um, get before that, but it is not our value reference. It might be L value or R value. It might be const or non-const based on reference collapsing. So eventually this is the solution that is proposed by uh, P0847, which says, Let, let's allow member functions to get this impl impl implicitly, okay? And then you can actually um, deduce the correct type of this, okay? Um, there is a question here about virtual functions. Mm, I don't know if this function can be virtual. I didn't read that in the paper, but there are other uh, interesting- I just, uh, I just looked it up. It can't be neither virtual nor static. It can't be. Yeah. So it can't be virtual. Okay. So uh, Andre just uh, took a look at the paper. It can't be virtual, but we do not need it to be virtual in this case. Okay. We don't, we don't need it to be virtual. Now this solves the problem because eventually what we say, okay, the actual return value would be either TL value reference or TR value reference or const R value or const L value because we use again, the folding reference here on auto. And we do the, we use the STD forward on the actual reference type or actual type that we deduced for this, which is like a magic. Okay. It solves it like a magic. Uh, and that's nice. Okay. So the method is const. If me is const, it is our value. If me is our value. And again, L value, if me is L value, et cetera. And this is exactly the same as it with uh, any other forwarding reference. Very nice. Now, in this case, I called the parameter me. Uh, in the paper itself, they call it self, but self is just, is just a name. It might become a convention to call it self, but you know, it just eventually a name. So in other uh, slides, I will call it self, but eventually the important piece here is the this keyword that comes before the parameter, before the type. Now the problem is solved. And the question is, can we do more with that? And the thing is that we can. Um, so let's do some more things with that. And everything that is uh, presented here is in the paper. Nothing here is my you know, uh, invention. The paper presents 
all the goodies that we will see here. So the first thing, first thing is that once you have the, this parameter, you can do something that was not a, that is is not uh, doable today. You can pass this by value. Now passing this by value in some cases is value, because for example, suppose that you want to copy this. So instead of getting the reference and then copying, you will say, okay, just you know, bring me a copy which in a way allows the compiler for some optimizations. Suppose that I was an R value or, so in a way I can say, I want my vector to be a copy because I sold it and I want to sort the copy and return the copy. So this is an example of asking um, a member function to work on this while this is actually a copy of the caller. This is nice. It becomes even nicer when in a way you don't need a reference when you have a stateless object. In many cases, you have an object with no state, without any members. And when you pass it, you pass a reference. Now passing a reference is more costly than passing uh, by value something which is empty. Um, because in a way there is a need for indirection. So, if you want to pass, for example, the object function less than, maybe it's better to pass it by value. And again, this is another example from the paper. Uh, so uh, we can now um, have less than um, and, the uh, and the call operator for less than get less than by value. So when you, when you use, when you will use the call operator on less than, it will be used on a less than copy and there, there will not be a need to uh, pass a reference. Another uh, example of using by value is for objects which are quite um, uh, small, in, in which case it is more expensive to pass a reference than to pass by value, like for example, string view. Uh, I think it is said that string view, it is better to pass string view by value than passing it by reference. But then when you call a function on a string view, you actually call it using the reference. And if you want, you can create the methods in string view based on a value. Of course, this would, would need a change in the library, either a change in new functions, or maybe it can be done on old functions as well. But it has some um, performance, some potential for performance gain. So these were uh, examples for how you can use the deducing this by saying, I want to deduce this, or I want to use this as by value. Um, there are more than that. You can use this for a recursive lambda. So a recursive lambda is today something that uh, cannot be done. A lambda cannot call itself because we do not have the, the name of the lambda in the lambda. Uh, there are other proposals for how to allow recursive lambda, but in a way this proposal solves that and the other proposals I think will in a way will vanish, will disappear, will die. Uh, because once you catch this, which is the closure of the lambda. The lambda is in a way a function object. And once you capture it, the, the closure of the lambda, then self is the lambda. And then you can call self inside the lambda itself. So the lambda catches or captures the lambda itself as the first parameter. Um, and again, this is part of the proposal itself. Um, it means that lambda would need to allow that. And there were discussions and uh, the paper uh, said that there were discussions whether it is possible or not. And eventually there is a um, consensus that it is possible. Lambda could use this syntax. And I think the last very impressive result is cursely recursive template pattern without the cursely, without the recursive and without the template just leaving the pattern. Let's see how the pattern pattern can work without all the C, R, and T. Now, curiously recurring template pattern is used when I want to add, for example, 
some feature or some ability to a derived class. And I want to implement this ability in the base class, but the ability itself needs to use something from the derived class. So in this example, I have a sum type that implemented the prefix operator plus plus. And I want to add to it the postfix operator. Now, adding the postfix operator is something that I can write once. I, I can write it in one place and use it in many other classes. The only thing I need is to call the prefix operator, but before that, remember the old value and return the old value. That's the only thing I need. But I do need to call the proper prefix operator. And the proper operator is in the derived class. So what I do is I inherit from this utility class called add postfix increment, and I provide it with myself, which is the CRTP, the curiously returning template pattern. Then the base class, which is templated, is instantiated the actual instance of this template class with a derived type. And then inside, I do the static cast to the derived reference. I take this, which I know is the derived class, and then I can uh, store the old value, call here the actual plus plus, which is implemented in the derived class, and here I am the derived, and eventually return the old value. And this is nice. This is a neat solution. I can use the add postfix post increment for any class that has the prefix increment. And, and it's not a virtual function. It's not a virtual call. And it is not a virtual function. That's correct. It is not a virtual function. It is like, uh, in a way, static polymorphism. And the cool thing is that when you go with deducing this, there was a discussion whether deducing this should assume that this is the type of the class in which we meet it. I mean, we are in the base class, we saw this, and we must deduce that this is the base. And eventually the decision is no, we will deduce the correct type according to a template parameter if there is a need to. So if we want to use the exact same idea of deducing this, we can write the same thing without template without recursive template and and it works. I, I mean, you, you cannot compile it now because there isn't any reference implementation as far as I know, but you know, uh, conceptually it works. So what we have here is the add postfix increment without a template. Inside, we have the postfix increment operator, which gets this, but it gets this based on the self template parameter. So here, in a way, in a way, here, you, you, you can say, well, we do have the CRTP. We do have cursely recursive template pattern. It comes here. Well, yes, it comes inside the function, but not on the base class. It's much, it is much nicer. So here we say, OK, when I call the plus plus, the actual plus plus that I call is on a, on a type, on an object of type some type. So the calling object is an object of some type. So this, or the self-deduced template parameter, is some type, which means that self is some type, so TMP is some type, and the plus plus is called on some type, and you do not need to do any static cast, any use of the derived from the CLTP. So there is no use or no need for CRTP. And, and this is quite cool. I see some uh, messages in the, in the chat. Uh, Amir, yeah. Amir yes. uh, in this example, uh, this is a perfect example to me. Like if instead of auto TMP equals self, I write auto TMP equal uh, this, well, Will something go wrong? Uh, I think well, it would not work. I, I believe I, be, I believe this and self here are synonyms. No, I think why? they are not. I, I will tell you why I think they are not. Because this here, 
I, I guess. Um, mm, let me. Right. It, it has to do with the instantiation. Uh, of the course, what is, you need here is probably star this. Okay, star this is the actual type, and the question is whether star this, uh, when the compiler compiles it. Um, it might, it might be that you are right, that the- No, 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 I, I think, the thing is that when you're looking at templates, the types are deduced at the point of instantiation. So when you're using this mechanism with the self, then self will actually be the real type because that's the point where the real object is instantiated and that's where you know the type. But right. when you're just using star this, it's in the local scope of a member of add postfix increment and the compiler has no way of knowing statically the real type of the object. The whole point of CRTP is to give you static polymorphism when you're inside a dynamic hierarchy in those cases where you can deduce this stuff. And all, all the deduce this here does is replace the static cast, right? The only yes. way you can do that is that when you know and the, the parent object doesn't know. It's only, it's only the, 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 the subclass. Okay, so, thank you, Adi. Thank you. Yeah, okay, so now I'm convinced that uh, star this would not do the work. Um, and self, of course, is deduced as a template parameter, uh, I mean, as a templated pa uh, uh, type, and then it is used as the actual type. Wouldn't, uh, it be, wouldn't it be nicer if it was just this auto reference self, so you don't even see the template type name self? Mm, I think it might be, let me think. And I think, I think that this way, uh... The overload of the operator plus plus uh, in the sum type, it might not work because it is a template, and you overload the template uh, function without the template, and it might go wrong uh, at the comply and at the comply time. No, I, I think what Adi suggested is to go with concepts with abbreviated uh, template uh, parameter, which means without saying template type in itself, just saying this auto. Double ref, which means here uh, folding reference because it is an outer, and then self. That's and I good. think it should work with abbreviated uh, template type. You showed an example yeah. before. Oh, I, I did. Uh, I, I saw. Uh, maybe we saw it in the lambda exa example. Yeah. Uh, it here. For all, that's like an equivalent way to. Yeah, I think, I think it is. Plus twenty. It's not. Um, so th this is what I had. Um, the next uh, one is for questions, if you have. Uh, and we can go back to any slide to watch again. Uh, again, uh, the, the examples are not mine. I took the examples from the proposal itself. 